Hello, welcome to How to Set Up Metasoft by Creating a New Practice. To create a new practice in Metasoft, you will need to first go to File, then New Practice. Once you do File a New Practice, you will type the name of the doctors or the practice name here. Then you would highlight the name, copy it, and paste it in the same box below. This way, you want to make sure that both names match, both boxes match. For this purpose, I won't do that because I've already set up here, name of the practice. So once you copy the name and both names matches, you want to do create. When you're done with create, a box will populate for you to fill out the practice information. The box will look like this after you've done create. In this box, you want to make sure you fill out the practice name, the address. You would only have to put in a zip code and it'll populate the city and state. Then the phone number, the fax number, the type, you want to choose medical, anesthesia, or chiropractic. Enter in the federal tax ID number. The practice type and entity type. If the doctor files as an individual, then you want to check individual and person. If the doctor has a group MPI number, you want to make sure you put the group MPI number here and you'll put the individual MPI number in a different location. So once we've entered that information, don't close it out yet. You want to go to the practice ID tab. In the practice ID tab, you want it will be blank if it's a new practice. You want to click new. Once you click new, you want to leave it as all. Leave the insurance carrier as all. Click the national provider ID. And here you want to put in the group MPI number, not the individual. If the doctor does not have a group MPI number, then you will put the individual MPI number here. For the tax ID, you want to click the circle next to the tax ID, enter in the tax ID number, and if the doctor has a taxonomy, you want to click the taxonomy bubble and actually enter that information. You should never enter information into the legacy ID number. That is a field that was used with older medical. You would not have to use that unless the, doc the insurance have given you an additional number such as a Medicare provider ID number, provider ID number, or a Medicaid provider ID number um, in addition to the MPI numbers that you already have. That will be the only reason you would use a legacy ID number. Once you've entered all the information, you want to make sure you press OK. Once you press OK, it will actually save it. And then you'll see a row that populates here that shows the provider, as to all providers that are listed in your system, all insurances. This is the MPI number I want you to see in box 33 if need be. Now the practice pay to and statement pay to, you do not want to fill those boxes out. Those boxes are if you are using a billing service or if the billing service is actually doing the billing. You want to click save. Now you've entered in the practice information. Next, you want to come over to list, down to insurance, and then over to carriers. Here will be where you will put in all your insurances. Now, of course, when you buy Metasoft, it's going to be blank. I've entered in Medicare here as an example. So once you get to this actual box, it'll be nothing here. Then you want to click new, just like you did with the practice. Then you will enter in. You'll leave the code blank. The Metasoft system will create it. Enter the name of the insurance. For example, I'll do Blue Cross Blue Shield. Enter in the address. You don't have to put in a city or state. You'll put in a zip code, and it will fill out the city and state for you. Then you want to put in the actual phone number. For the actual insurance, you want to always make sure that you include the insurance phone number so when you actually print out reports and you're calling and check claim status, you can actually look at the phone number simpler from looking at the actual form. Then you want to go to the options and code. For this example, we're going to leave it as paper because we're not set up for a clearinghouse on this demo. But once you decide to do electronic, you just choose to drop down and choose electronic, and it'll send the claim electronically. Also, with the procedure code set, 
You want to make sure that you have the ICD-9 checked because we're currently not using ICD-10 yet. And then, of course, once you do electronic, you will choose your receiver. It may be a Validity, Relay, or Indian or any other uh, personal one. Then you want to put in a payer ID for that insurance here. For your type, you want to choose what type it is. In this case, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. The allow is for the allow fees with click save. Sorry, I didn't let me correct my phone number. So we'll click save. So now we have Blue Cross Blue Shield and the Victor Field for Medicare. So you can close that out. Then we want to go to list and down to our providers. Here's where we will put our actual individual ID. You see one already, see one that is already listed, which is Shannon Brooks. So for example, I'll show you what you will do. You will click new. You will let, leave the code blank, it'll create it, enter in the, the name, address, phone number. Make sure you have the signature on file box check. You don't necessarily have to put a date, but you can. You do not fill out anything on the reference ID tab. On a provider ID tab, you'll do the same. You'll click new. You'll enter in all. Now here where it says file claim as, again, if the doctor is recognized as a group with the insurance company, you want to put file claim as a group. This will pull the information from the practice. If the doctor files an individual, it would actually put the doctor's name in box 33 versus the name of the practice and all of that information. So this really makes a difference in whether your claim gets rejected or denied. So it's very important to know how you're registered with the payer. Put in the MPI number, put in your tax ID number, and then you want to click Save. And then once you click Save, then you can actually, you'll see the row populate here. So we're going to do Save here. So now we've created our provider. Lastly, you want to do your facilities. You want to go List, then down to Facilities. And then you will actually do new, the same as you've done before. Type in the name of the facility. You have facility ID, put in a facility ID, and this is where you also put your clear ID if you have a clear ID. If you have any referring providers in your system, you want to make sure you go back to list and add in the referring providers information. And then your procedure, payment, and adjustment codes. You want to make sure you come over here to create that. Your procedure payment adjustment codes is where you will put your CPT codes and any of your adjustment codes like Blue Cross Blue Shield payment code, a credit card code, cash. For example, I'll show you one of how to create a code. In addition to your CPT codes, you can also put those codes here. I'm going to create a code for copay. So I'm going to do credit card copay. This is my symbol for it. And when you can create your own. When I come here to description, I want to type credit card copay. And then on my procedure code type, I want to make sure I choose um, credit card copayment so it knows how to actually apply the payment. It has my codes here. And we're going to click save. So now I have, this is where I put all my CPT codes, procedure codes. This is where I put all my adjustment codes or any note codes that I would want to populate in my, my list. So I have some codes here. Now I'm going to close that out. Now the diagnosis code, you go here, down to diagnosis codes, and this is where you would actually add a diagnosis code. So for example, I would do new, then I'll actually enter in the diagnosis code like 467.1, and that is rhinitis, I'm sorry, sinusitis. Once I put it in, I want to click copy because I want it to be an IC9 code, IC10 code. I don't know the equivalent, but I'm going to say that it is HIPAA approved. Click Save. So now I've created my IC9 code and my diagnosis code list. Now, if you purchase the CD called Codes on Disk, for $3.99, most vendors sell it for. You can actually enter in the CD in your system and it will download all the current IC9 codes. That way you don't have to individually add them manually 
or type of man, they're actually populating the system. So that may be another way to go. So now we have created our practice. We've entered in our practice information. We have all our MPI numbers. Please make sure that you put the same information under practice information. Make sure your uh, providers, facilities, all have the same role underneath them. So if you create an additional role for a certain insurance, make sure that same role is listed under all three places. Again, the practice, the provider, and the facility all need to have the same individual role, the same amount of roles. It must be consistent. The next thing you'll need to do after you set up the background of your system is actually entering a new patient. So stay tuned, come back to me, and you'll learn how to enter in a new patient in Medisoft, as well as enter an established patient. Thanks. Talk to you soon.